AI probably won't take your job, but it'll take something much more valuable. You may have heard of this Columbia student before. He made an AI tool called Cleat Code and used it to cheat on his coding interviews. I founded this company called Cluely, and I just got kicked out of Columbia for uh, building this tool called Interview Coder. It's like a cheating tool for software engineering technical interviews. And at another university, half of the class was caught cheating using ChatGPT on one of their essays, and the professor demanded a redo on the essay for everyone. Uh, half of you using ChatGPT for the last essay, so guess what? But here's the thing, ChatGPT and LLMs have become a part of our life now. But there's a blurred line between when it's okay to use it and when it's not. There are things that have been left unchecked, creating consequences that we never could have foreseen. And today, I wanted to unpack all of that, both the good and the bad. And you'll never guess what I found. So tell me, how do you handle the conflict within your team? Awesome. That's a great question, right? So. To handle conflict within the team effectively, uh, first, I would love to encourage. Okay, you guys, so we have to take a look at this news clip first. It's from a BBC newsreel where they anonymously interviewed students who were actively using ChatGPT to cheat. Soaring levels of cheating using AI on exams and coursework at many UK universities. Cases of AI misuse have, on average, trebled over the last year. Most of my exams are pretty much all at home, open book. So people just copy and paste and just put that in. Select the question and then that copies the image on and then you could just be like, what's the answer to this? And then five seconds later, it will give you the right choice. So it's very, very seamless, very quick to do. Now, socially, I do have a problem with labeling students as cheating when they're using ChatGPT. It's a new tool that people don't quite understand yet. And when people don't understand something, it's easy to think of it as cheating. When the internet first became popularized, for example, it took some time for professors to stop demanding book citations in their essays rather than the legitimate studies found online. In fact, when I was in high school, I was still required to use book citations, not just articles. On the other hand, I can see the concern for using AI to cheat. It does overall remove the need for critical thinking skills if you don't use it correctly. And unfortunately, most people don't use it correctly. I found a bunch of studies that were done on students using AI in the classroom, and the statistics were kind of shocking. For example, 75% of students who use ChatGPT regularly reported a decrease in their critical thinking skills. And 60% of those students using ChatGPT reported a decrease in their problem-solving skills. Okay, so these are probably just random numbers to you. So what does all of that actually mean? So the way that these studies measure critical thinking or problem-solving skills is by having a control group. These are the students that don't use ChatGPT frequently. They're the people that don't really have access to AI or they just decide not to use it. Now they compare those students to students who do frequently use ChatGPT or other LLMs, and they have them both take tests without AI to measure their cognitive ability. So these were the types of tests that they were given. They were given critical thinking tests where they were required to analyze information, evaluate arguments, and make informed decisions. They were also given problem-solving tasks that required them to use reasoning and logic to solve complex problems. And lastly, they were also given cognitive ability tests. This assessed their memory, attention, and processing speed. Now, researchers also looked at past performance of students when ChatGPT wasn't even around. And they do that to compare historical data because they can't always control that control group. But some people don't think this is a problem. Cheating implies it's a contest. School should not be a contest. I think most schools are basically childcare systems mixed with status games. I think schools should embrace this technology and they should really think, how can we impart knowledge into individuals? How can we impart critical systems? Because again, you will never not be without this AI as you grow up and you have to prepare for that. The argument is, in fact, that these LLMs will be around forever now, so we might as well get used to learning how to use them. And it's actually vital for students to understand how to use them in school in order to succeed. When I look at every single individual who uses AI regularly, it almost has nothing but profoundly positive impact on their life. I was just spending some time with my parents-in-law, and they use AI regularly for all sorts of things that they find incredibly valuable and that improves the quality of their life. I personally do the mergers and acquisitions deal where I bought a company last year and the AI was so powerful at helping that process. The conversations were transcribed and they were turned into letters of intent. 
and then press releases and legal documents. And we probably shaved $100,000 worth of costs and, and we sped up the whole process and it was pretty magical to see how, how it could happen. And he's not wrong. AI, when used correctly, can have profound effects on your life. For example, now I don't have to spend hours writing every single one of my scripts. I write the bare bones and I do the research. But AI fills in the gaps and makes the process much faster than it was before. It buys me back time with my family and gives me time for my hobbies as well. And there are so many other ways that people use it to buy back their time. For me, it's just hard to categorize using AI is cheating, unless it's used as a codependent crutch. It's a tool that garners some responsibility, of course, so it can be misused. With great power comes great responsibility. But what I've found to get the best possible output is when I brainstorm my ideas first and come up with coherent instructions on what the LLM should do. And I've talked a lot about prompt engineering in previous videos, so I won't really get into that today. But if you do struggle with prompt engineering on October 9th, I'm partnering with IBM Skills Build to host a session on all of that. We'll walk you through building your own research agent and using IBM Prompt Lab so you don't have to spend hours digging through articles and abstracts yourself. You also get to hang out with me and explore these new tools and we'll be giving away 300,000 IBM Watson X credits for free. More info and the sign up link is in the description below. You don't want to miss it. Before we get back into the video, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Luma AI. They're an AI video generation platform most known for their Dream Machine, which is a text and image to video generation system. And they recently came out with a new model called Ray 3. Ray 3 is Luma's most advanced model yet, the first with native HDR. This feature allows users to transform standard footage into HDR using the product. And it's not recovering lost details or information. The model is actually reconstructed them, which is the cool part. This means the model generates the missing information with impressive accuracy, offering VFX artists and colorists a new tool to bring unsalvageable shots back to life. Like, look at the details of some of these videos. It's so insane that this is created using Ray 3. So some of the other cool features that I brushed on were text to video. You can bring your idea to life with Ray 3 by just typing in a description. And also image to video. So you can transform static images into dynamic videos using a start frame and end frame or both to precisely control your outputs. So you can actually access this model and create videos using Luma's Dream Machine product. And I've added a link in the description below. They also shared a full breakdown of Ray 3 and all of the incredible features. I've also added a link in the description for that. So feel free to check it out. And thanks again to today's sponsor, Luma AI. All right, now back to the video. Another big issue with LLMs is accuracy of information. In fact, the latest ChatGPT version got hit with a lot of backlash. One of the biggest problems with ChatGPT and other AIs is that they regularly hallucinate, which means they often create convincing yet completely wrong information. This is just something that people take for granted, including myself sometimes. Just because you have AI there to help you summarize things faster or maybe find answers to homework assignments quicker, it doesn't mean it's always foolproof. The problem is a shift in mindset. We need to treat LLMs like really smart friends who can get things wrong sometimes. We need to fact check and do peer reviews and not just take its word for everything. Otherwise, misinformation can spread pretty fast. And that's how trust gets lost in a society pretty quickly. The other issue is bad actors purposefully using AI to mislead people. I mean, we've seen the AI of Will Smith eating spaghetti in a bathtub and earlier versions of deep fakes even. And I don't know if you guys remember this happening. A viral fake picture followed by a real dip in the markets Monday. The Dow now down about 200 points. The S&P uh, down about a quarter of a percent right now. The fabricated photo posted to social media seeming to show a fiery explosion near the Pentagon. Experts say most likely made using artificial intelligence. There was total chaos when misinformation like this spread. Hate rhetoric started spreading online about which group was responsible and people started panicking. It can easily be wielded to create a lot of hate and anti-political rhetoric that we've seen in many countries today. But with all these negative consequences, there are a lot of positives too. So for example, faster fact checking. Ironically, the same AI that can spread misinformation 
can also fight it. Journalists and researchers are already using LLMs quickly to cross-check claims across multiple sources, because if something starts spreading on social media, you need to counter it very quickly. It's also democratizing access to reliable information. So a lot of people don't have access to really expensive databases or even paid academic journals. And AI can surface summaries of research or complex documents in plain language. That means more people can fact check. A lot of these studies are done with language that people don't always understand because there's a lot of technical terminology dragging down the actual content of those pages. Now people can summarize it so it's easy to learn, so more people know more knowledge, if that makes sense. AI can also detect fake content, so AI is also being used to detect this misinformation, spotting deep fakes, manipulated images, or text patterns that don't look authentic. So it's not just creating the problem, it's kind of part of the solution too. So here's the thing, AI isn't going away. It's already woven into the way that we study, the way that we work, and honestly, the way that we think. And that's the real hidden cost of using AI. Not that it's going to steal your job, but that it's slowly reshaping you, your attention, your problem solving, and the ability to think for yourself. But it doesn't have to be all bad. If you learn to use it as a tool for fact checking, brainstorming, double checking your own blind spots, then AI actually makes you sharper. It's like glasses for your brain. But if you let it think for you, then yeah, that's when the real damage happens. So the hidden cost of AI isn't just intelligence, it's responsibility. The more we lean on it, the more careful we have to be. Because these tools can either make us the laziest generation in history or the most capable. And honestly, it's kind of up to us to decide which way that goes. So let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to see AI being used in the right way, don't forget I'm hosting a session with IBM Skills Build. The link is in the description below. Join us on October 9th. See you guys in the next video.